Hello and welcome back and that's right today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use Wondershare recover it to recover data that's been deleted or corrupted from your Synology NAS. When I was reached out to by the guys at recover it on Wondershare asking about whether they could sponsor some videos for us generally I don't really like sponsorship here on the channel I've done it very few times and always for a good reason in this case it was an absolute no-brainer, notwithstanding the fact that me and Eddie both have used this application ourselves on both hard drives and uh, USBs, I hate seagulls, but on top of that, it's the simple fact that we have also recommended this tool in the free advice section, so when it comes to them paying money to make content that we probably would have made anyway, easy peasy. So, um, what we're going to be doing in today's video is walking you through the process, telling you exactly how to do it, and the expectations you should have when utilising software like this, but... Again, like we've got to give them a plug. They are sponsoring. Straight away, it's worth highlighting. One, the application is available as a free trial version if you choose. With that trial version, it doesn't matter if it can't find anything. It will scan your NAS as well as other recovery methods that are available and supported on the platform with over 2,000 storage devices supported and over 1,000 different file formats supported by the recovery application. You are able to still use the application during the trial period and you only have to pay if you want to recover more than 100 meg. And even then the prices, they're not too shabby to be perfectly straight with you. And we can open them up in a new tab. And again, later on, We'll be going through the pricing just a little bit. But for now, here we are on a NAS. It's the Synology DS1823XS Plus, an enterprise-grade NAS. We've got some Synology hard drives in there. We're not using drives that have got data recovery included. And I'm going to be doing some very silly things. First and foremost, in this NAS right here, we've got these three folders. These three folders here are what I use for my Plex Media Server testing and my VM testing we run on the NAS systems. As you can see, there's all of the files that we'd normally use, all of those big jellyfish files that we use for multimedia. We've also got all of those files that we've used in the past for photos, for music, for TV shows, movies, all in there. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to delete the hell out of them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to accidentally, massive quotation marks, delete that data from the NAS. As we can see, it is deleted. There is no recycle bin. If you choose, we can go in here, go into the shared folder area, find uh, virtual machine and images there open it up as an extra tab and as you can see there is no recycle bin on there i've now lost that data it's as good as gone now while it's doing that there in the background what i'm going to do is i'm going to restart the nas another thing you should never ever ever do if you're going to try um to you know recover data without professional recovery software but still nonetheless i'm going to re restart this nas so Normally, by now, doing these very silly things I've just done, you've just lost your data. And this is where we're going to see if that Wondershare Recover it is up to task. So, moving over to that software, again, you can download it nice and simple. You just click the Try It for free. This should be linked in the description. And as you can see, it's arriving there at the top right of the screen. You'll download it. It's a very simple .exe. Double-click Install. No need to register first time. And you'll go in straight away. We're just going to wait for the NAS to recover. And when you've got the software up and running, you'll be able to find it very quickly. Either search for Wondershare Recover It uh, or just search for Recover It on its own. Ignore the black screen if you see that there on screen. And the application will open up. So while we wait for the Synology NAS to reboot and so we can attempt our recovery of the Synology NAS data, let's talk a little bit about this application here. So I'm using a full version of this with a full key on there, but again, um, you can utilize the application completely for free to check which dot files can be accessed. It's only when you recover data beyond 100 meg total where you will need to have to pay for a subscription there. Now that payment, as mentioned, breaks down into um, $100 for the premium there for multiple PCs, and then you've got the 80 and uh, the $70 respectively there, again, one cent difference for whether you're going to be using some of the more advanced features and services. Now, what are those advanced features and services? Well, as you can see, the baseline level one is what you're going to be utilizing there for the standard recovery. Then you've got the other options there with things like um, uh, crashed PC recovery, where it can create a bootable USB. And again, although that's obviously um, more focused on the Windows platform there, there's huge support of Linux as well, as well as Macs as well. So if you're running a Mac with a T2 processor inside, you can utilize this recovery software to recover data there as well. And that includes uh, BitLocker encrypted data as well. Now, 
that recovery they've got a high success rate there but there is also dedicated photo and video uh, advanced recovery tools as well and one of the main reasons we're doing this video there is the dedicated nas section there so as mentioned recover your pc data and also create a usb bootable the advanced recovery there a photo and video and even a corrupted video repair tool which again is specialized not just towards 1080p but can also be used for 480 uh, uh, sorry 4k and 8k media now you may have heard a beep there in the background during that wonderful ad section there for you um we can go ahead and log in here i should highlight this is video one of three and i'll be straight with you if this goes badly i'm still going to publish it anyway um but this is part one in later versions of this series we're going to look at other nas brands not just synology we're also going to be running some more advanced repairs but more on that later after we've started the recovery so as you can see if we go back into file station here we can have a little look there's nothing in that folder if we choose to and go into the control panel go into that shared folder once again find that folder there open it up you'll also observe uh, that the, uh, not only is that recycle bin disabled there but we got rid of compression we got rid of data integrity protection there if we make our way into the snapshot replication area and try and see if the system created any snapshots because you know we don't want to cheat on this we want to make sure that this recovery is a nice clean straightforward uh, one we can see there are no snapshots taken of that data as well there's no recycle bin no snapshots that data should in theory be absolutely disappeared so what we can do now is um, make our way into the application but it's worth highlighting before we start this recovery on your NAS you are going to need to enable SSH in order for the application on your local PC or Mac or Linux system to be able to communicate with the NAS on a fundamental tech backend level and normally SSH is disabled on most NAS systems but you're going to have to enable it and also make sure you're accessing it locally not remotely via the internet and secondly make a note of that port ID by default it will be 22 but if you have changed it for reasons of security you're going to have to keep a note of that so now we open up the Wondershare recovery tool uh, with recover it and then go down to nas and linux i really hate seagulls today so click nas and linux and from there choose whether you're using a generic linux based um, os and again you can cover true nas as well and, and we've got synology qnap asus thor terra master they're all under the banner there including wd and seagates as well if you've got some of the older generation that is from them that are now end of life and from there click nas recovery select click manually as right now this is on a separate net well it's not on a separate network but when it's scanning it we've not given the application um direct scanning privilege so we're going to connect manually and from here we're going to need to enter that ip this is the number at the top left of the screen so as you can see 192.168.1.206 from there make sure that port number we took earlier on is correct then enter user and account credentials that allow access both read and write to that folder in the shared folder section so you don't necessarily need to use an admin account you just need to make sure you're using an account that has access to where the data was deleted in my case that multimedia folder there from there click connect from this point the application on your local client system will begin searching that nas it will then start be doing a fun uh, a detailed deep scan at the 50 percent mark but for the first 50 percent it's going to be doing what's classified as a quick scan the first 50 percent of this scan will slowly go through and go through some light layers of data on there now you might have data that the system has uh, you know systematically um, overwritten over time maybe you're running a retention policy uh, on certain data within Synology Drive maybe you're running um, kind of a database that gets regularly updated and it's creating little subset little sub uh, directories as well perhaps you're running a surveillance setup and you've got multiple cameras dotted around and those cameras are obviously doing lots of recordings over time whatever way you look at it that data technically exists on a kind of breadcrumb bits and bite level for retrieval which is why even though we've only done a small deletion you know relative on this system with that data being gone the system is finding all manner of deleted data it's going to be scouring through emptied recycle bins from previous directories 
different applications you may have installed or uninstalled. And of course, if you have been running surveillance and you have had multiple cameras and recordings, they will be some of the large blockier data. Now, we're gonna fast forward in a moment, but while it's doing it there, what I want you to do to really keep an eye on during the fast forwarding is the left-hand side of the screen here, because you were gonna see the number of these databases increase rapidly if this is anything like a single drive recovery. Now, while it does that in the background, I want to talk about one of the main reasons that data recovery on a NAS is both such a good, uh, such a big deal for Wondershare Recovery to do, but also why it is so fundamentally difficult. Now, I mentioned in the introduction when we talked about them sponsoring a few videos here on the channel, one of the reasons me and Eddie were cool with it was simply that we have used the software ourselves and we have recommended it to others. Now, what I meant by that is, I've had times in the past when I have had USB keys long before my days of knocking around with NAS to the degree that I have right now, when I've got the odd drive I've used for on-site, off-site, where data may have got corrupted. Now, during that time, I've used Recover it and other data recovery tools to lesser degrees to recover data on that light level. On top of that, when it came to utilizing single disk recovery, recovery like an OS drive, and not just utilizing that crash PC recovery that uh, Recover includes, a single drive recovery means that that data lives on those platters, and you've only got a single drive to be concerned with. Now, in the case of most NAS devices, NASes are going to have multiple drives inside because people are taking advantage of redundant array of independent disks, or RAID. That is when you've got multiple drives where all of them being read and written to periodically, and when they're being written to, they're creating a bit of data known as parity, that little building block of data, that little blueprint. So you've got data, 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 blueprint, data, 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 data blueprint, data, and then in every wave, that parity is moved around. The result is that data recovery on a NAS is so much more detailed than recovering from a single drive because you're actually recovering fragments of data from multiple drives. So one large piece of data may not just reside on one disk. It might be spread across multiple disks. And when you factor in the data being recovered from a deletion, across multiple disks, that's an incredibly detailed task and one that all too often can result in data recovery being flawed. Now, the larger the file, the more uh, the higher percentage or the higher chance of inconsistencies. So that's something we're really gonna look out for when we see just if Recovit has a, a been able to recover the data that I just deleted and in the restarted NAS here on the DS1823XS+. So what I'm gonna do now is fast forward to when the recovery period reaches 50%. And again, that is when the recovery switches from a quick check into a deeper scan. So let's fast forward. Okay, so here we are at 28%. I thought I'd take a quick little jump in to see how things are going. And already we can see that that folder, the multimedia and virtual machine folder, has indeed appeared there. But the subfolders are yet to appear in there. So this may have to be that deeper, but at least we know that it is now going through that folder structure there. We're just going to wait to see if it, what it fleshes out for us there and just to what degree of recovery uh, uh, the Recovit software is going to provide for us. There's certainly 37 files, but they seem to be breakdown files there in the background rather than the full data recovery. But for now, let's fast forward to the completion of that data recovery at 50%. So now we've reached the 50% mark, we can see that in the multimedia and virtual machine images uh, folder that we deleted earlier on, now all manner of data is now available to us. Now bear in mind, a lot of that might be thumbnail data, but I think what we should do, and we'll let the system look in the background, but what's really cool about this is even during the recovery there, we can make our way in. So if we go into the Plex Media, first, um, Plex Media Server folder here, we can go into, say, the Photos tab here, and as we can see, the original folder structure has now been recovered. And again, while we're doing this, as you can see there, on the NAS itself, 
there's still no recovery on the NAS. This is all happening from within the recover tool. So we're going to leave that to recover in the background. And there is loads and loads of images there that are from the Christmas 2009 folder. So what we can do is if we select one of those there, and if we like, we can have a little look at the file. So we can see if any kind of detailed view is uh, available. What we can do, for example, with the IMG 2019, we can click preview and it can actually give us preview of that original data there all the way through. And remember, it hasn't even finished the recovery. So all of that data has now been recovered, at least as far as the photos are concerned. And with the photos not even recovered, this is all still accessing it from within the application too, which is pretty cool given that the data has been deleted and we're up right now using applications that are stored locally to rebuild that data that's inside. Now, the big test is going to be about the recovery of video data. Now, that is something that I'm very doubtful will be allowed for us to, to be able to see without more in-depth recovery. For example, these are the jellyfish files here. It's already recovered their original size. Those of you that have followed this channel before, you'll know that with the recovery of sorry, the jellyfish files that we've used for Plex, uh, long-time followers of this channel will know that the biggest file is a 30-second, 400 megabits per second, 1.4 gig file. So it's already recognized the scale of that file there. But if we go for some of the easier ones down here, that's 3 megabits per second jellyfish file. We can click preview there. And as you can see, it's going to try to give us a preview. I will be very surprised if it can preview this file due to the complexity of an MKV file. And I think this kind of recovery is something you're, is you're probably only really going to see if the recovery is actually being actioned. But nonetheless, blow me down. There was me getting ready to explain that it wasn't recoverable. And there it is on screen uh, with us being able to preview that file. Now, again... Coming out of that, we can close that. We could choose to recover that if we uh, recover, um, want to recover that. And again, you're only going to pay if you want to recover more than 100 meg. So you've got, with the free trial version, 100 megabytes to deal with. So if your file's pretty small, you can probably get away without paying a penny. And they're probably not going to like me saying that on a sponsored content, but why not? Let's leave that in. Um, but once again, as you can see, it's not like any of that data has been restored to the NAS there. That recovery is seemingly happening here within this cached window, and it gets rebuilt locally for us here. So what about the recovery itself? How do we see about doing the recovery? When it comes to recovering the data, I would recommend letting the recovery software reach 100%. Because although the second 50% of that recovery will take longer as it's a deeper scan, when it comes to more complex and larger data, it is recommended to make sure you've got all of the different waves and the individual full platters being covered in that recovery to ensure that the files you recover are as consistent and complete as possible. Now, when you do recover, you're going to be recovering to a local device. You won't recover to the NAS. You can use an external drive. That's what I'm going to be utilizing here. But if you've got space on your local client, you can even use that if you choose. There are ways and means to make the NAS remote accessible. Well, I wouldn't recommend sending the data back to the NAS via your network, as it may cause inconsistencies in the right action of that recovery. But if we scroll down and find that folder that we are utilizing earlier, so again, we're going to find that recovered folder that we uh, got that it managed to work through let's find it here on the left hand side of the screen multimedia and virtual machines and there is our recovered folders i'm going to connect my external drive like so and hopefully we'll hear a little bing bong of that on screen and there is our recover there so what I'm going to do is I've already created a folder on the drive called recover it, but you don't have to do that. And what I'm going to do is select the folders that I want to recover. Once again, if you're using the trial version, you can recover up to 100 megabytes without paying any of those premium or extra prices there. It's included in the free trial. So if the date you're going for is quite small, that might be beneficial to you. But do bear in mind during that recovery that, that if you do select, in this case, a whole folder, as you can see there on the left-hand side of the screen with 5,808 files, 
even if you've deleted data and you're just trying to get this small bit of data recover uh, data back if this is a folder within a system that's been running and had data coming in and out of it for a long period of time don't be surprised if there's even older data being included so it will help to be a little bit more precise about that recovery so in my case for example we've got all of those 4k test files recovered there that what we can do is go ahead and select them one by one in order to make sure the recovery is a great deal faster not just all the data overall so for example if we go back and go to the photo data and go to the images and vms there because as mentioned earlier on we've got different kinds of more complex data and if we go into the data there for plex media server we've already mentioned earlier on that you can preview these files very easily sorry to be repetitious there same goes for some of those video files too but if we go ahead and try to recover the photo data first, that should be the nice quickest one for this video. So what we're going to do is just choose to recover just the one folder. We're going to recover uh, Shoesmith Cricket in Hove. We're just going to go ahead and recover that folder there. So if we go for it there, we select Recover. And as you can see, it will ask us to select the folder that we want to recover into. Now, you may also notice if you go back via the past that you can multiple click like in a nice breadcrumb sort of a way where if you want to recover multiple files from different locations you won't have to perform multiple recoveries what i mean by that is and it may be getting a little bit unclear i apologize and um, if we have a little look and go back into our plex folder let's go for it then we're going to go for our recovery what we can do is come out of that one there go in we can choose for example to go into uh the plex media server folder there go into photos and choose to recover just that folder but then also allow us to go back one maybe go into uh, the 4k plex test files there and select one file there then we can go back again and select perhaps from the music folder there go into the home alone soundtrack recover files there quite again you've got that option to be quite specific about the files you want to recover rather than try to recover everything and then end up with a swathe of other data that you may not want to recover from there click recover and now you have to select where you want the data to go to so as you see as i mentioned earlier on i've collected that external drive to my local machine and i should have created a folder called recover it in there and again i can go ahead and create a new folder or I can go ahead and use any one of an existing folder in there. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to go ahead and select an existing folder, the cheese backup folder there. I'm then going to click recover. And now the system is going to recover just those select files that I wanted there. Now bear in mind, had I wanted to recover larger scale data across a whole swathe of different files and folders that would be possible and in the next two parts in this series we'll be tackling different kinds of data and maybe even looking at some other nas um, brands as well during the recovery because right now we are looking at quite small data but what about when we're dealing with much 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 bigger data because again the application themselves do highlight that they cover both 4k and 8k um, recovery services built into their platform with some quite dedicated video uh, recovery tools for repairing a lot of those higher denser files overall but as we can see the system has opened up in here we can go into this folder and there is shoesmith cricket in hove and there is our files and we can make our way in have a little look and there is all of our files all lovely and fine inside our nas we can go back go back into the media images there go into recover it and then we can see in the partitions we've recovered other bits of data there is our music file there as well there is our video file there as well going along we've got the recovery the file is fine it's playing all the way through so there we go we can make our way back and we can have a little look at that recovery deck there it's recovered all of those files and ultimately this is what it's about when it comes to data recovery on a nas platform the fans on my laptop starting to kick in as this does its job quite busily now we as mentioned we are going to cover a couple more videos on this subject um this next one is going to be about deeper and larger file recovery but at the same time i'd like to hear from you different recovery scenarios you would like to see in the third part in this series thanks again to wondershare recover it for sponsoring the channel for these few videos again 
we probably would have done it anyway. So it's nice to have a bit of free bunts that we can put back into making content. And again, in the description will be links to try out Recovit for yourself from the Wondershare website linked below, as well as links to other guides that we're peppering in some other data recovery articles across the um, uh, blog and on YouTube. So do check those out. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.